Hello by Robert Hart. Welcome back. So far, we've talked about cure systems and why they matter. And today we are going to slow things down and let the rubber soak in a little. Literally. We are going to talk about swelling tests. One of the simplest but most powerful ways to learn about a rubber network. Here is the basic idea. Rubber is a network of long polymer chains tied together by crosslinks. Those crosslinks are what stop the rubber from dissolving in a solvent. If you drop an uncured gum into toluene, it just dissolves into sticky soup. But once it's vulcanized, the crosslinks hold the chains together. Instead of dissolving, the rubber absorbs the solvent and swells like a sponge. How much it swells tells us how tight or how loose that network is. A tightly crosslinked rubber will swell only a little, while a loosely crosslinked one will soak up much more solvent. And that's the principle we use to estimate crosslink density. Now, how do you actually test? You start with a small weighted piece of cured rubber. Nothing big, just a few grams is enough. You dry it first so you know its weight without any moisture. Then you immerse it in a solvent. The solvent choice is important. You want something that can penetrate the polymer and interact with its chains. For non-polar rubbers like NR or SBR, toluene is the classic choice. For polar rubbers like NBR, you might use acetone or MEC. The solvent doesn't have to be the one the rubber will face in real service. It just has to be one that makes the swelling visible and measurable. You leave the sample in the solvent, usually at room temperature, for a set time, often 24 or 48 hours. During that time, the solvent diffuses into the rubber and the samples expand. At the end, you take it out, blot the surface quickly and weigh it again. Now you have two numbers, the dry weight and the swollen weight. The difference tell you how much solvent has been absorbed. You can also measure the dimensions before and after if you want volume changes. In the end, interpreting the results is where the magic happens. A small swelling ratio means the network is dense. Lots of crosslinks are tying the chains down so the solvent can't push them apart very much. A large swelling ratio means the network is loose. Fewer crosslinks so the chains can spread out and absorb more solvent. In the lab, you can even take it further with the flory rainer equation to calculate actual crossing density numbers, but the practical takeaway is simple. Swelling shows you how tightly your rubber is cross-linked, and this matters a lot. Crossing density affects hardness, elasticity, compression set, and resistance to heat and solvents. If you cure a sample too long or too aggressively, you might see it swell very little. That tells you the network is tight, maybe even brittle. If you cure too little, swelling will be large, showing a weak network that won't hold up in service. Swelling tests are a reality check on whether your cure system and your cure time are giving you the network you actually wanted. Let me give you a practical example. Let's say you are developing a seal for hot oil service. You make test slabs with different cure times and run swelling tests in toluene. The slab cured for 8 minutes swells like crazy, it's too loose. The slab cured for 12 minutes swells less, which means a better network. The one cured for 20 minutes barely swells at all. Very dense, but maybe too dense if you want flexibility. So swelling tests help you see that curve and help you decide where to aim. And that's today's episode, my rubber heart. Swelling tests may look simple, but they tell you a lot about the invisible network inside your rubber. In our next episode, we'll take on aging and durability, how heat, oxygen, and time slowly attack those networks and how we can measure and control it. Stay tuned.